Hi, Barbara. How are you? <laughs> Paula, I'm fine. Thank you for the invitation to present Los Golos work today. <laughs> well, we want to welcome you to Austrian Wine Time. Um, coming to you this morning, uh, the sun is just coming up here, and I know you're finishing up your afternoon um, uh, from uh, La Bergerie in Fredericksburg, Texas. And uh, we are doing um, a series of events in partnership with the Texas Wine, in, uh, sorry, Food and Wine Alliance mm -hmm. and the Austrian Wine Marketing Board um, to share some of our favorite wines with our guests and just raise general overall awareness of um, the, fan the fantastic offerings um, coming out of Austria today. And certainly we could not do that without speaking about the wines of Schloss Goebbelsberg. <laughs> so I'd like to welcome um, uh, welcome Barbara Kohler, everyone. Barbara, would you introduce yourself and, and talk a little bit about your role, role within Schloss Goebbelsberg? Yeah, with pleasure. Well, I'm Barbara and uh, I'm the export manager of Schloss Goebbelsburg. I've been working for them for the past almost nine years by now, so time passes quickly. Yeah, and I'm uh, in charge for the US market, uh, but also other markets in Europe, of course, and Russia and the Emirates. Uh, so that's my part of the world, which I take care of. And I really miss my trips to the US. And last year, actually, my last trip was to Texas. Yes. <laughs> I could be with you right away again. It was a whirlwind tour, but it was so much fun. Um, and just really, really great to have you. What are your favorite, what's, what, what's your favorite thing about Texas? Well, actually, I, I love traveling around with uh, your husband, David. Uh, we, we've been to Houston and Austin and also Fredericksburg. So that was great. And uh, we had tastings there. And uh, well, the people, the food, I love Texas. I mean, this is uh, always a nice uh, place to be. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I don't know if you knew this or not, but um, our, our time together kind of coincides uh, uh, Schloss Goebbelsberg is having an anniversary and Fredericksburg is having an anniversary. So this is the 175th year of us being a town kind of in the Texas Hill Country between Austin and San Antonio and beautiful mm -hmm. Texas wine country um, uh, of being a town that was settled by peoples coming from Germany and the Habsburg Empire. So we already have a great history of loving um, uh, culture and cuisine from that part of the world and certainly the wines and I know that you have a very special anniversary right now happening. <laughs> That's true yes we are celebrating our 850 years uh, vintage and anniversary. <laughs> our estate is one of the eldest of uh, Austrian estates and um, in Kamtal our wine region we are the eldest uh, wine estates. I mean wine making growing uh, dates back actually to the Roman Empire in our region so more than thousand years and our estate was actually founded uh, in 1171 by uh, Cistercian monks who uh, were given or granted land uh, and they planted their first vineyards uh, in 1171 on, on a site which we still work on, which is the Crew of Heiligenstein. So this is one of the eldest uh, crews. And one of the finest all sites in all of Europe. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Yeah, so um, this is our long history of the estate and our three columns of Schloss Goebbelsburg is history, tradition, also the culture of wine, since our estate is also seen as a cultural heritage of wine. Fantastic. Well, mm -hmm. um, we're going to be tasting two wines today, but before we begin, I wanted to ask you, when people are looking for Schloss Goebbelsburg in the market, they might see three different kinds of labels, and um, one I know is the Schloss Kellerei label. Yes. <laughs> so the label will say Schloss Kellerei, Schloss Goebbelsburg. Mm -hmm. One is the tradition label, and then you have Domain Schloss Goebbelsburg. Can you talk a little bit about those different offerings? On the winery? Yeah, we, we do have these, as you say, three labels. Uh, our main brand, of course, is the traditional Schloss Goebbelsburg label, uh, where, we, where you can find uh, all the wines from the village level onwards. So village wines and the Grüß, but also our specialities like the sparkling wines, the red wines and the sweet wines. Um, and the Schlosskellerei label is the 
I don't want to call it the basic uh, line, but it's our classical line. So with, within these line, you'll find the Kamptal, the regional level wines like Kamptal Grüner and Kamptal Riesling, but also our classical Cistercian Rosé, which is so popular with, with you as well. And the domain uh, Goldsburg label is not so common in the US actually. Um, it's more a label which we, um, which we place for retailers or um, yeah, we don't sell our wines to supermarkets but to retailers mostly. So that's the brand which you more and more find in Europe rather than in the US. Well, the two offerings we have today are both from the 2016 vintage. Um, mm -hmm. Um, one of my favorite sites, we're going to be drinking the Schloss Goebbelsberg Reed Lom. Um, uh, this is a wine, I'm going to grab the bottle and hold it up here. <laughs> um, this is a wine that, um, among many other offerings from Schloss Goebbelsberg, um, we're going to be featuring through the month of April at our restaurant Autos. Um, uh, and uh, it, it's, it's not to be missed. Um, really fantastic Riesling. Uh, lush and powerful, but so nuanced. Um, so I, I have some in my glass right now that I cannot <laughs> wait to try. So again, this will be our auto's offering. <laughs> yeah, Reed Lam is a beautiful vintage. Um, uh, sorry, Reed Lam is a beautiful Cru. It's uh, located actually at the slopes of Reed Heiligenstein, the Cru which I just men mentioned before already. Um, if you want, I can show you also some pictures of the yeah. estate and the cruise, uh, so that m might give you an, an, a nicer view into our estate. Um, if you want to let me share the screen, then I can uh, show you some pictures. Awesome, thank you. <laughs> so I've prepared some slides. Um, can you see it? I can. Yeah, it's wow. Um, I just can't open the PowerPoint. I don't know why it's not opening now. I've tried it before and it was working. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry. Okay, so we have to do it like that. I'm sorry for that. Oh, that's quite all right. I don't want to. Gosh, look at that. Let me try another thing. Sorry. Maybe it goes better with this. Yeah, now it works. Sorry for the delay. <laughs> yeah, so this is uh, Schloss Goebbelsburg, the Austrian wine heritage. And um, as I was mentioning before, we have a thousand years of wine on our back due to that wine growing in Kamtal dates back to Roman Empire. So that's an old picture of the estate. Here you can see the Danube uh, Valley and the regions, uh, which are actually the main uh, valleys where white wine is growing up in Austria, which is the Kamtal region, the Gremstal, Wachau, Dreisental and Wagram. So these are the valleys along the Danube. You can see here the Danube River and the, uh, the three rivers which actually run into the Danube. From the northern part, you can see the Kamp, the river Kamp running in the Danube. That's why where our region is, the Kamptal. Tal is the German name for valley. So the valley along the Kamp River. But you can also see the Krems River here. Mm -hmm. And here from the south, the Trisen River. And Goebbelsburg is in the heart of the Danube region, one hour northwest of Vienna. So Vienna, the capital city, is here in the eastern part of Austria. And we, we go one hour northwest to Vienna and come to the little village of Langenlois, which is next to Goebbelsburg. And that's just an impression of our Danube uh, Kamp Valley. So you see the Kamp River here, which runs from the north to the south and runs into the Danube. And this is actually already the crew of Ried Heiligenstein. And here on the lower part, that's where Ried Lam is starting. So and, the and lamb is predominantly low S soils. Yeah, lamb grows on less soils. And on the top where we have the, the smooth hills, Riesling is growing. So this is again a picture of, the, of, uh, of a Riesling crew. You can see Riesling is growing on terraces here, whereas 
the Grüner Veltliners, they grow on lust and loamy soil on the lower land, which is closer to the river camp. So on top, you find Riesling growing on terraces, on mineralic terraces of uh, schist and quartz and gneiss soil, and on the lower land, where, of course, is also reed lamb located. That's where you find more lust and loamy so soil, which you can see here in the picture. That's the picture also of the crew of lamb. Lamb is trained in the Lyra style, which is a two, um, it's, it's, it's a training system which opens to two sides. So you have the sun reflections from both sides and this gives the wine more structure, more volume and more body in, in, in that case also with reed lamb. That's also a nice, picture of uh, Schloss Gobelsburg. The estate looks like that uh, still today. In the medieval ages, when, when the estate was founded in 1171, it was uh, a fortress. Uh, Gobelsburg actually means the fortress of the village of Gobelsburg. Burg means fortress. And then the fortress was torn down and refurbished, rebuilt in the Baroque style Mina house that was in the, um, in the 18th century. And that's how the, the, the estate and the castle still looks today. Uh, our offices, for example, are here on the ground floor. Michael, who is uh, taking care of the estate, he's living with, with his family here on the upper floor and the cellar is underneath. And as you can see the vineyards here around, that's the inner court of the estate. And here you can see um, Michael <laughs> next to the Cistercian monks. Um, this is uh, the order of the, the, the monastery of Stiftswettel, who is still actually the owner of our uh, estate. And they have been running Schloss Gobelsburg since 1171 until 25 years ago by themselves. Uh, and that's what is so unique with us. We are one of the eldest estates in Austria, which have um, a continuous wine growing history within the monastic estates. Mm -hmm. And Michael, he took over the responsibility of Schloss Kobelsburg in uh, 1996, so 25 years ago, due to the fact that in the 1990s, it was not very hip to become a monk anymore for several <laughs> reasons. So they were kind of lacking their younger generation within the community and we're looking for somebody else from outside to continue running the estate. And that's when Michael actually took over the res responsibility. He originally comes from the Western part of Austria, from the skiing resort areas in the Alps and his family, they are running a very nice Relay Chateau Hotel um, in the skiing uh, regions. And Michael, he grew up with wine because they're having an amazing wine cellar in their hotel. Mm -hmm. And Michael, he always wanted to become a winemaker. He actually did not want to continue running the hotel. His younger brother now is running the hotel. And he came, Michael, he came to Kamtal uh, in the 1990s. He studied winemaking from the very beginning with uh, uh, colleagues of uh, producers in our region and got the chance to take over Schloss Gobelsburg in 1996. And since then, he's running it in a long-term lease, which means we still belong to the monastery. He's running it with his family in a very traditional style, um, keeping in mind that he has to pass on this heritage of wine to the next generation. generation. So he's, he's running it in a very careful and respectful way. Um, our estate is also um, certified sustainable, uh, due to the fact that the monks have been running the estate for so many years, for so many generations in a sustainable way, Michael, he sees his mission and he's uh, convinced that this is also the best thing to, to our vineyards, to our soil, to pass it on to the next generation in a sustainable way. Sustainability, of course, does not mean working sustainable only within the vineyards, but it counts for us for the whole system, which means taking care or taking consideration that we have all the social duty to our uh, employees. I mean, they are, uh, all our harvest workers, they are um, employed throughout the whole year, not only during harvest season, so they get paid throughout the whole year. Yeah, Sustainability important. also means that we take care about the whole consumption of energy within our cellar. We have, for example, no electronic temperature control on our casks. Uh, we work with regional oak casks only, so we do not import from anywhere in the world. This is all about sustainability, which counts for the whole system. 
And now this actually brings us back to the wine we are tasting, um, because the main focus with us is our appellation system. Michael, he is uh, the chairman of uh, an association called the Austrian Traditional Wineries. Our abbreviation is OTW, which stands for the German term of Austrian Traditional Wineries, Österreichische Traditionsweingüter. And this association which was founded in 1992 with us in the Danube area. And our mission is, or our hard work is to, to work on an appellation and classification system, uh, which is based on the Burgundy system. Uh, having regional wines at the base. And here you can see the Schlosskellerei label, uh, which stands for our classical wines here at the base, the regional level wines, Kamtal Grüner or Kamtal uh, Riesling. In these wines, we want to represent our expression of the region, which is cool climate due to the fact that we have cool winds coming from the north and warm winds coming from the eastern part of the Pannonian plate in Hungary. And these two winds, they actually mix with the influence of the Danube River and the Kamp River, resulting in high differences between day and night temperatures. And therefore, all our regional wines are very crispy, fresh and fruity. And that's what we want to show in our regional level wines. On top, you, we have the village level wines, um, which is with us Langenlois, Grüner Veltliner, or Söbing for the Riesling. And on the very top, we have the single vineyard wines, like Riedlam. And <laughs> single, lim, uh, single vineyard uh, level is again divided in three levels, in normal, non-classified Grüß, in Erste Lage and Große Lage. Erste Lage is corresponding to the top 15% of all the vineyards within our Danube area. Um, we have been classifying Erste Lage after watching the vineyards for about 20 years. And that was done for the first time in 2010. Mm -hmm. And Große Lage level, the very peak, is not existing yet. So they will be representing the top 5% of all the vineyards. And we are still working on defining our Große Lage. They would correspond to Grand Cru. Now we are, our appellation is ending here with Premier Cru level. Mm -hmm. And we're now in the process to find out out of the now existing 72 Erste Lagen, which one is actually having the potential of be upgraded or um, yeah, designated to Große Lage level. level. And this will happen within the next five to 10 years, I suppose. Fantastic. And Erste Lage, the symbol 1OTW, you find on the capsule and on the label, like with Riedlam. Beautiful. And here, here we are again. <laughs> <laughs> Riedlam. Uh, you've seen the picture already before of Riedlam. I was explaining to you that it's uh, trained in the Lyra system, a, a two side training system or an open training system. Um, where you get the reflections of the sun better to both sides of, of the wine leaves and uh, of the whole uh, wine. Therefore, this is kind of a warmer training system and uh, gives uh, the wine more, or the grapes more intensity, more body, more structure. And that's what you probably taste in Riedland. Yes. <laughs> And it's uh, on the lower slopes of Ried Heiligenstein, growing on Lust and Loamy soil, but also influenced by Heiligenstein in a way, because we have on Heiligenstein, which is a smooth hill, um, where Riesling is growing on mineralic soil of schists and quartz and gneiss, and lots of feldspars. Um, these sediments actually are being washed out through millions of years of erosions, of course, mm -hmm. uh, down the hill of or down the hill of Heiligenstein into the Gru of Riedlam, mm -hmm. and giving more uh, minerality to the Lust and Loamy soil, which you which you find here, and that's why you find more minerality also in this Gru of Riedlam, and that's the reason also why Riedlam is classified as Erste Lage, one OTW, the symbol, what you can see here again. Um, 
because it's said that the top crews of all our Grüner Welschliners with us in Kamtal or in the Danube region, they are located at the slopes of a Riesling crew due to the fact that sediments of Riesling soils are being washed out to the crews of the Grüners. And that's what is happening actually with Riedlam as well. Well, as I'm tasting it in the glass, um, you know, certainly the acidity is there, but it is very lush and textural and the fruit is very generous and giving. It's just delicious. <laughs> what are some of your favorite things to drink reed lamb with? Well, reed lamb is a perfect food pa pair for uh, spicy dishes. Spicy dishes, would, which could be barbecue dishes, the southern cuisine, um, Creole style dishes, but also Asian style and, uh, and, and spicy Asian dishes. Um, I also offer red lamb uh, to, to meat dishes, for example, if you find uh, uh, people who don't like red wines with the meat dishes. Um, for example, veal dishes with uh, creamy sauces, lamb goes perfect with that as well. Mm. So this would be the food pairing recommendation, what I would suggest. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> Delicious. Well, we can't wait to share this with our, our guests at Autos. Um, and then I want to move on to, um, to what my, my mother wanted me to tell you is her favorite wine. And we'll always have a place on her table. She's constantly asking David to, to bring her some more Schloss Kalerage <laughs> Weigelt. <laughs> <laughs> this is, yeah, this is typical um, Zweigelt, classically, classical Zweigelt, what we um, have with us in Austria. You know, Zweigelt is uh, actually belongs to the Burgundy grape varietals, the Austrian Burgundy grape varietals. And our region, Kamtal, or the whole Danube uh, region, is actually well known for white wines. Uh, and for sure, we do have two thirds of all white wines growing with us uh, in, in the Danube region. But all the red wines are important with us. And especially at our estate, since we do belong to the Cistercian Monastery, the monks, the Cistercian monks, were actually the first ones to import Pinot Noir to our region. Um, and Pinot Noir was uh, brought to Austria and to the Danube area in the 1990s, sorry, 1960s, mm -hmm. uh, by the last monk who was actually running the estate before Michael was taking over. And he was um, kind of aware that uh, Pinot Noir would grow perfect with us. I'm talking about Pinot Noir now because Zweigel is seen as the grandson of Pinot Noir, the yeah. Austrian grandson. And that's why I tell the story about the Pinot <laughs> as well. Um, so Pinot was, uh, was planted with us and uh, the monks of our monastery they were so successful in growing Pinot Noir that they concentrated also a lot on the Austrian family burgundy grape varietals uh, deriving from Pinot Noir, which is Sankt Laurent in the first generation. I can also show you a slide of the red wines. I just pass on quickly. Here you see Pinot and the son of, of Pinot, the Austrian son is Sankt Laurent, and the grandson is Zweigelt. Sankt Laurent was a crossing of Pinot Noir as the father grape varietal and the mother grape varietal is, varietal is still unknown. They're still trying to find out which was actually the mother of St. Laurent. But Zweigelt is definitely the grandson, the Austrian grandson of um, Pinot as being a crossing of St. Laurent and Blaufränkisch. And here today we taste the classical Zweigelt, which is, um, showing these characteristics of the Zweigelt grape, which has these cherry flavors, slightly nougat touches, and such an easy to drink uh, uh, red wine, which I perf perfectly like with barbecue dishes. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I love to serve it slightly chilled, especially on hot summer days, mm -hmm. because then it, it's also this refreshing um, taste. So that's how I, like our Zweigelt. Such a perfect wine, especially for us here in Texas, where it's just so warm um, so much of the year that mm -hmm. it is refreshing and um, it doesn't weigh you down. And it's um, it, it will always have a place on our table. So um, the Zweigelt, the Schlosskeller Eich Goblesberg Zweigelt, the 2016, this one we're going to be offering um, in our six pack that will mm -hmm. be sold uh, through the month of April. 
um, uh, at La Bergerie. Um, uh, and some a portion of the proceeds of this wine are going to a, uh, from the sales of the six pack, my apologies, are going to go to uh, a, a wine focused grant that we're building with the Texas Food and Wine Alliance that will be awarded later this year. So we're really, really excited about that partnership and about giving back to our community, which is as so, so important to us as well as a company. Um, uh, but again, cannot wait to introduce people who haven't had uh, Zweigelt before. I know they're going to fall in love, and um, this is going to have a place on their table just like it does at ours at home. Oh, goodness. Um, Barbara, you've traveled all over the world. What do you think are some of the biggest misconceptions about Austrian wine? Well, Austrian wines are, they are refreshing wines. Um, to understand Austrian wines, uh, it's always a bit important also to talk about our history in Austria. Um, in Austria, Austria was a big empire actually until uh, 1914 after the, uh, at the at beginning of First World War. And our empire was kind of influenced by so many spicy dishes due to the fact that we had influences from the Hungarian kitchen, from the uh, Alto Adice, Adice uh, kitchen, from Bohemian kitchen, and uh, Slovi uh, Slovenia, Slo uh, Czechoslovakia. So all these uh, dishes of uh, the empire, of the, of the um, um, yeah, monar monarchy, uh, <laughs> they influenced uh, also our habits in drinking. And since Austrians, we always love to drink wine with the food. Uh, these wines, they had to be good food pairs. So uh, luckily, for example, Grüner Veltliner is such a perfect food pair because it's so um, diverse, it has so many diverse uh, styles. You find, for example, the Kamtal Grüner and also Kamtal Riesling to match these entry-level dishes. Uh, salads, easy starters, or if you go skiing, you just drink a glass of Gruner on a skiing hut uh, in, <laughs> in, your, in your break of skiing. Um, but also for the refined dishes, uh, like uh, first courses, then you go to the village level wines of a Gruner, like our Langenlois. And as, as we have talked about uh, Riedlam before, you can find these uh, very refined, elegant Grüner Veltliners, which have, of course, uh, they are vinificated in different way, like Kamtal Grüner. Mm -hmm. These wines, they go perfectly with refined dishes or yeah. spicy dishes. So, um, for example, Grüner, you can you can vinificate it in so many in so many different styles that it expresses. Uh, it's characteristic in so many way, ways, and that makes Austrian wines, and it's also happening with the Rieslings and our uh, Zweigels, these wines, they show in so different ways that you can pair them with any kind of food, and that's probably the unique, uh, one of the unique selling points of Austrian wines, that's why uh, they're getting so much and more popular. This is true. The proof is always in the glass. <laughs> <laughs> and they are tasty. They are refreshing. So after having one glass, you ask for another one. You want to finish the bottle. It's not that you feel like uh, full after a glass of Austrian wine. Yes. And yeah. that's, uh, yeah, also what I like. I like, uh, I like wines which, uh, which, which are refreshing. So I don't want to be fed up uh, with with a wine after a glass. I want to finish the bottle and want, I want to I want, <laughs> I want to drink a glass. glass. <laughs> <laughs> well, Barbara, I want to thank you so much for your time today. Um, it means a lot to be able to, um, to to connect in this way, even from a distance. Um, uh, in, in such challenging times, uh, we find solutions to continue to share. Um, ourselves and um, our stories and our and our wines and it means a lot uh, to, to us that you participated today so thank you again and I just wanted to wrap up and say just one more time for everyone so um, the Reed Lam is going to be available at autos uh, through the month of April Schloss Kellerei Goebelsberg the Zweigelt um, will be available through the six-pack offered for purchase at La Bergerie uh, and through the month of April and beyond and um, I look forward to sharing a glass with you in person soon. Um, I can't, I can't <laughs> wait. 2022. <laughs> um, and, and once again, thank you.
You're so much welcome, Paula. Thank you for having me here, having Schloss Goebbelsburg here with you. Thanks for promoting our wines. And I say cheers to Texas and cheers, cheers. to Berlin. <laughs> Good anniversary to you. 